today we are just excited about studying the word of God with you and we just want to express our appreciation to you because we know that uh, you could be doing something else but you've taken time to be with us and we just want you to know that we are happy that you are here and you're spanning the globe and we appreciate that we have individuals in Africa individuals in Indonesia we have individuals in the Philippines, uh, California, all the way to Florida. We have individuals uh, in South America, down in uh, Mexico, in various places. And we just want you to know that we appreciate you taking the time to study and support us as we look at the Word of God. We're going to be looking at Proverbs, the third chapter in verse five. It's a very simple text. I'm not going to be long because I just want to communicate something that I believe is very potent. And the reason I believe this text is so potent is because it is a directive for us. And that directive says trust in the Lord. The text reads this way, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So therefore, this proverb is basically giving us some instruction to help us to understand how God wants to work within our life. God wants to direct and guide our path. David says that he is a shepherd. In fact, David acknowledges the Lord is my shepherd, and because of him, I shall not want. But the proverbialist basically helps us to understand that we'll, we have a God that's able to open a path for us and to make a way for us. But he says in order for him to make that a way, one of the things that he's asking us to do is make sure that we trust in him. The concept of trust is the concept of leaning and depending on him. We need to be able to rely on him. So many times we live in a world where we're afraid to rely on things simply because a lot of things are unreliable. Yeah, uh, we can't rely on certain people because certain people will let us down. But according to the proverbialist, he tells us that we can trust in Yahweh. That's right, we can trust in the Lord. The word Lord is the word Yahweh. That's his holy name. That's his divine name, and that's his name of covenant. One of the things that God has done is he's covenant with us as human beings because he's our creator. He made us. He breathed life into us. And guess what? He cares about us. God cares about us. He made a decision before the foundation of the world, from the foundation of the world, that he would send his son to die for us in order to save us because he knew about our nature and how that sometimes we turn away and do things that we shouldn't do. We have a desire for the flesh. We have a desire for the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And because of that, many times we turn away from him and we walk away from him. But Jesus was sent. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. It was that act of love. It was that act of sacrifice that causes us to recognize that he's somebody that we can trust. So the proverbialist says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. The heart that he's talking about is your seat of intellect. Many times we're rational beings and because of our rationalism, we, call, we, we begin to make decisions and not every decision is always the best decision. Sometimes we'll question whether God is there. I was reading an individual who wrote a devotional and in the devotional they were talking about the children of Israel and how that the children of Israel at certain times may have felt that God wasn't there. It seems strange that God would allow the children of Israel to go into Egypt, but somewhere later, after Joseph is forgotten, things would get rough, and God allowed it. 
God allowed things to get rough. Even in your life, I want you to know everything won't always be positive. There will always be things that are negative occurring in your life. The question is, is what are you going to focus on? You see, one of the things that we need to learn to focus on is that God is at work in all things for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. And there's never, ever, ever a time when God is not working on our behalf. And I know sometimes it may seem that way. Think about the children of Israel. And all of a sudden, while they're there in Egypt, you have a king or a pharaoh who didn't know Joseph, and he's afraid of the size and the number of the Israelites. And so therefore, he orders that every male child be slain. It would seem, God, are you listening? God, are you there? Are you really working on our behalf? But you know what? God was listening. And God had never walked away from that circumstance. And God never walks away from yours. Even though it may seem that you're going through negative times, I want you to know that God hears your cry. God hears you. And he'll be with you to lead you and to guide you. I mean, think about even David and how that David was pursued by Saul. He had to escape from his own home and leave and live with the enemy. But all, through all of this, David understood that God was there and that God was working for his good. Sometimes God allows us to have things negative happen in our lives in order to develop us. As I look back over my life, I began to see a lot of things that occurred in my life, both positive and negative. Some of them I brought on myself, but some of them others brought upon me. And sometimes the circumstances were always good. But one of the things that I've learned is that God brought me through all of it. God is able to bring you through because if you trust him, he'll make a way for you. So the text says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. One of the things I minds are capable of simply because God has made us so awesome is rationalization. We are able to rationalize. We are able to figure things out. But one thing about God and how he works, his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The scripture says, as far as far as above, the heavens are above the earth. Is his thoughts higher than our thoughts and his ways higher than our ways. So a lot of times the way we think God should work is not always the way that he works. And for this cause, a lot of individuals fail to trust him. They stop trusting him. They believe that God has forgotten them, that God is not concerned with them. But I want you to know that God is concerned and you can always trust. You can always lean. You can always depend on God. Now it says, trust him with all of your heart. Now with all of your heart is all of your seed of intellect, all of your, your will. You should be giving it to following and relying on God. Now, sometimes that's difficult because sometimes we do have doubt. We do have unbelief. We do have things that will enter our minds. But even though those doubts may come, we need to learn how to dispel them. We need to learn how to drive them away. And I think if we practice that, if we just continue practicing, driving out the doubt, driving out the disillusion, driving out the depressed feelings, I want you to know that ultimately faith will win the victory. That's right. Our faith is able to win the victory. So if we trust in the Lord with all of our heart and we don't lean to our own understanding, but we just acknowledge him, we acknowledge him in all of our ways, then the Bible says that our outcome will be positive. Now, when I think about positive outcomes, sometimes to everybody, your outcome may not necessarily look to be positive. I mean, there are individuals who live a life and yet they die. You remember the martyrs and individuals, Polycarp. You even see Paul. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. And henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give it to me at that day. Paul was at the end of his life. He recognized that he may lose his life. 
In fact, according to history, Paul was beheaded. But one of the things that Paul knew is that even if he was beheaded, he's won the victory. Sometimes our circumstances may not necessarily appear to be positive to everyone. But one of the things is our real reward, our real reward is a heavenly reward. That's right. Oh yeah, we have him guiding us and leading us to green pastures while we exist in this world. And we can experience positive times, even in their negative circumstances. We can still experience positive times because ultimately we know God is with us and he's working for our good. But ultimately, our reward is not about what stones and mortar and sticks and all of those things can present us. It's not about what we can put our hands on in this world. But our real reward is that heavenly reward because this life is just a moment. That's right. You can gain everything. I heard an individual speaking this week and I was just impressed with him because he used the text that said, what if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? And one of the things that he stated is that even Alexander the Great wasn't even able to gain the entire world. But what if? What if he was able to? He says it's not worth a loss of your soul. And he says, he talked about the duration of it, the duration of time. Our life is just a vapor. Everything that we obtain in this world is going to pass away. It's going to pass on into the hands of someone else. That's right, because ultimately our reward is not about what this earth can give us. Our reward is heavenly. And therefore, he's made us to sit together with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has made us to be able to experience the joy of a, a life that will never fade away, a crown of life. And I look forward to that. I really appreciate my life right here because God blesses me. God guides me. God opens up all kinds of doors for me, and God has allowed me to become a person of influence, even in this world, and that's an awesome thing, but I really know that my real reward comes after this, because this is just the test. As I live my life, I recognize I'm going to get older, I'm going to face sickness, I'm going to face other things. That may not be so pleasant, but even though all of those things may come, I know I have a home in the heavens, not made with hands. It's not everything about this world. Now I encourage you, do all you can in this world. Exceed, excel, and be successful in this world. But your success comes when you trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. But in all of your ways, you acknowledge him. I tell you, God will direct your path from earth to glory. God bless. Who this world is not my home. We must realize our time is coming. There will be no <laughs> more trouble. There will be There will be This world is not my home. We're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up. Somewhere beyond the A mansion waits for me at heaven's open door. 